Welcome to Weekly Wisdom from Jubilee Circle. We teach the common wisdom of love and unity that is found in all mainstream religions, metaphysical teachings, mysticism, and inspired secular and religious writers and teachers throughout the ages. Our goal is to help you connect with your higher divine self and transform from the inside out so you can become a force for love and transformation in the world. Each week, we bring you wisdom from our founding spiritual director, Reverend Candace Shalou, and other guest speakers. We hope you enjoy this week's words of wisdom. Of course, the Miracles teacher, Marianne Williamson, is fond of saying that your past never happened how you remember it. It doesn't. You ask two people about what happened, and you get two different answers, right? You got your perception, they got theirs. We don't even remember the past, right? But so often, that's where we prefer to live. Not so much by sitting around and reminiscing, but by viewing this present moment through its lens. Now, don't get me wrong. It's right to learn the lessons from your past so you don't repeat mistakes. But most often, we're using the past to judge a moment that doesn't have anything to do with what may or may not have happened before that moment. And we think of some possibility for the future and the little ego voice in our head goes, oh, that's never going to work. And it'll give you all sorts of evidence that sounds really convincing. So you abandon all plans and the ego quiets down because it prevented you from doing something that could threaten its role of ruler in your life. Or it does the opposite. It gets really loud. After dissuading you from pursuing some new possibility, it berates you for doing exactly what it wanted you to do. (laughs) And then it calls your entire identity into question. So you want to know how to shut it up? Leave the past behind. Drop the baggage in every moment so you can see the new possibilities that are emerging within you, around you, and you can give them a fighting chance. So this morning, Agape Licensed Spiritual Practitioner Deb Barnes is going to help us sort out how to get past, uh, get the past out of the way so it doesn't cloud our present and keep us afraid to pursue those infinite possibilities that can ultimately help us step into our role as the light of the world, which that will make us all say, oh yeah. yeah. Hear these wise and holy words. From Mark Twain. When I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I got to be 21, I was astonished at how much I had, he had learned in seven years. In front of one of my favorite teachers, Bishop T.D. Jakes, there are people who can walk away from you. I don't want you to try to talk a person into staying with you, loving you, calling you, caring for you, coming to see you, staying attached to you. Your destiny is never tied to anybody that left. Let me say that again. (laughs) Your destiny is never tied to anybody that ever left. (laughs) And it doesn't mean that they're a bad person. It just means that their part in the story is over. And you've got to know when people's part in your story is over. And then from, from one of my favorite teachers, Joel, Goldsmith, Joel S. Goldsmith, the kingdom of God is within us. The whole of the Godhead is to be found within our own individual being. Not in the holy mountains, nor yet in the temple at Jerusalem, but within us. Let's begin today, this, as I always do, in evoking the spirit that is within us. Just a short prayer. How grateful I am to be here right now, to be in this moment with so many beloved, mighty companions, both in the room and and in YouTube land, in, in consciousness. Grateful for my father and all the fathers that, that were used as a vehicle to flow us into this space. Grateful, grateful that God is our mother, father, is all-encompassing. 
grateful for Jubilee and, and the board and the band and the text and everything that, that comes together, the consciousness that creates this, this welcoming, holy environment. It is holy because we carry the spirit of the living God in us, as us. And God is, God is, God is, God is everywhere. There is no place or space where God is not. We live in a friendly universe. God is always for us and never ever against us. We are sourced and supplied by this, by this infinite intelligence, this divine wisdom. I am one with this power, this presence. It is my life. My life is the life of God. And as this is true for me, it's true for each and every person here. Each and every person in YouTube land. Each and every person being love and light on the planet is God knowing itself, revealing itself in, through, and as to each of us closer than our breathing. And so it's, it's from this, this place of oneness that I surrender myself as an instrument for spirit to speak through and in and as me. Speak, Father, your servant heareth. Speak, God, spirit, your servant heareth. And so I bless our time together. I bless each and every person. I bless each and every journey that is represented by the folks that are here. That we are indeed walking each other home. Mighty companions for a mighty journey. I bless each of us. I bless the musicians. I bless the music. I bless the tech. I bless the board. I bless Jubilee Circle. And call this time good and very good and it's already complete in the mind and heart of the infinite. Amen. Might need a second. You know, I, I'm so grateful for my father. And I'm going to tell you right now, God help him. He did the best he could. You know, and we needed him, I needed him to do more, right? That's what I felt as a, as a little girl that, that, you know, in my mind now and in my heart, I realized he did the best that he could with the knowledge and understanding that he had, and I needed him to do better. And I'm so grateful that there are so many fathers that are coming forth now that are conscious, that are in places where they can grow in spirituality, grow in consciousness, bring themselves into the, to the present moment. And I remember one of the things I used to tell to my students, because a lot of my students, their fathers were not in their lives. And I said, guess what you get to grow up and be? You get to grow up and be the father that you always wanted to be. And we get to grow. And there are a lot of fathers that had, have had to take on the roles of mothers. And, and mothers that have had to take on the roles of fathers. And so we, we celebrate them. And one of the things that I heard from T.D. Jakes is that our father gives us our identity. You know, the whole XY chromosome thing. And our, of our body temple, not of the other. And we can't... I, I connect that to our heavenly mother, father, God, gives us our identity. Because if we are... Since we are... Not if. Since we are one with the spirit of the living God, all of the qualities that are God are within us. And when I talk about qualities, I talk about peace, love, joy, compassion. We have that. We have access to that so that we can, we can show up and we can radiate outward our identity if we so choose to do so. 
We can be merchants of hope. But I'm telling you, and I'm a, it's like beating a, a bit, I'm not up much for beating horses or dead horses or whatever, but it takes work. We have to be able to spend time in silence and quiet and stillness so that we can get to know our consciousness. And as Reverend Michael says, what BS is running the show? And he's not talking about the other BS, he's belief system. Okay? What belief system is running the show? Is the ego running the show? Or is spirit? We're leaning into spirit, and spirit is running the show. And, and you know, it's either love or fear, and some continuum of that. And so as we sit still and in silence, and quiet, even if it's a split second, it's enough to start the flow of spirit. And a lot of fathers are doing that now. A lot of mothers are, are doing that now. And so what the invitation is for all of us is to begin, as Reverend Michael goes to you, to experiment. What would it be like if I just take five minutes in the morning, I find a place that's S-Y-B-D, sit your butt down, and be still or focus on, of course, a miracles mantra or something like that. Just five minutes. Take a breath. Well, I don't have time to do that. Well, I can tell you one thing. Time expands. If we spend five minutes in the morning, I find that I have more time and get things done more efficiently, effectively. Now, if I showed up at work and I am unmeditated, it's not going to go well for anybody. You know, I know myself. I, you know, I go over to a friend's house and they can take one look at me and tell me I had made meditated. Go home. <laughs> You know, and take time to spend that time in silence. And, you know, the things that we cannot control are circumstances. We can't control if somebody wants to walk out of our life. We, we have no control over it. You know, I have a, a mantra that Reverend Cynthia Ambrose gave me, and that is, I am, I am connected to everything and attached to nothing. And I've revisited that mantra. But that doesn't mean I'm not committed. I am committed to serving at Jubilee Circle. And I'm not attached. Because attachment is a, an attempt to control the uncontrollable. I can't control what happens at at Jubilee Circle, all I can control is myself and, and the work that I'm doing in my own consciousness and how I choose to show up in life. I am committed to a beloved. I'm committed. I'm calm. I'm consistent. And I am not attached because I can't be. My only attachment is to the spirit of the living God. And so I have to be willing to do my work. And you know, you can't think your way out of a problem. My best thinking got me in the worst situations I've ever been in. I couldn't think my way out of a box. But so many people want, well, I got to figure this out. And, I, I, you know, when, as soon as I figure it out, it's, it's going to be all right. As soon as this person changes and does exactly what I want them to do, whoo, it'll be right as rain. No. I don't want anybody to change on my behalf. I want them to show up as their authentic self. You couldn't do enough back bends and 
flips and turns to keep another person happy. It's exhausting. But my job is my own consciousness to raise my vibration by doing the work. Meditation, study, being in community. That's how I raise my vibration. This morning, I'm going to tell you, I was kind of a funk. But I put on Reverend Michael's Transcend Dance. And me and Leo, which is my new little puppy, got in the kitchen and we were just throwing down in the kitchen with Reverend Michael. And my vibration just automatically, you know, you can't listen to good music and not rise in that. We live in a vibrational mu uh, universe. So, you know, God doesn't speak English or Spanish or anything like that. It's vibration. And so we do the work on ourselves. And even Joshua ben Joseph said, as I rise, I draw others up with me. So as we do the work, it has a direct impact on everybody that's around us. They feel it. They sense it. Because we've done the work. That's what we showed up to do. We didn't show up, as Reverend Michael says, to get high. We, we showed up to, to rise in consciousness, to wake up to our true nature. We are love in human form. We are merchants of hope. We are miracle workers. But I don't know about you, but I don't always feel like a miracle worker. I feel like I need a miracle. I feel, I feel like jelly roll. I only talk to God when I need a favor. And God, I need a favor. And that's not true. I talk to God all the time. But anyway, but I love that song. So I have to do the work in my consciousness. And Reverend Mike, you know, I saw Reverend Wendy uh, Friday night in our community gathering. And she said that when they, people first come to Agape, they all want to be like Reverend Michael. They want his consciousness. We can't have anybody else's consciousness. We are individual expressions. Ben, uh, Pharrell Williams said, if you try to be like somebody else, the best you ever going to be is second best. So we are each responsible for our own journey. Now we can share steps and, and things that work for us to raise our consciousness, but I can't give you my consciousness and you can't give me mine. And then some folk know, I don't know, you know. So we got to do the work. So meditation, prayer, study, being in community. And another thing that, that I have learned from the Rev is we need a lift and shift partner. A lift and shift partner. Someone that we can call upon who will remind us of the truth of our being and, and, and help us to remember the truth so that we can raise our vibration to the truth. I'm not calling to get them to cosign and say, look what so-and-so did. They were so wrong and let me waller in it for a while. My lift and ship partner will sit there and listen to me for a minute and then ask me what is the truth. And so Jen Norton, my beloved partner, and she I just visited her this weekend as my lift and shift partner. I am her lift and shift partner so that we shift our perception back to reality with a capital R, which is the only thing that is happening here is either love or a call for love. And some people seem to be confused about love. Love is not a wimpy word. It does not put up with loveless behavior. Because what we allow teaches more than anything you will ever know. If we allow loveless behavior from another, that teaches that person that that's how I want to be treated. That's the way I deserve to be treated. Bring it on. It also teaches everyone who bears witness to our allowance of this behavior. We are children, beings of light, love and light from, of the most, all the power that there is, the presence. We are love. 
And we can fix our lips together and say, no, not on my watch. When you can speak to me in a civil way, I'm happy to have a conversation with you. But until that point, I can't. But you know what we do? And I found this with my mother. We carry and take on abuse from another. As long as they abuse us a little less than we abuse ourselves. My mother stayed with a man who beat her, chased me and my sister around, trying to molest us until she got to the point where it was, it was enough. He was abusing her more than she was abusing herself. And she, and we're, you know, there's a way of escape that is always made. And the timing is perfect. We are love in human form. We are here to represent the presence. But unless we have done the work on ourselves and on our consciousness, we don't have anything to give. And I can say, I am willing to see this better. I, I, differently, I surrender this to you. I know that there's a better way. I know God is making a way out of seeming no way. And I can't, I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know how the escape is going to be made. I don't know where the job is. I don't know where the relationship is. But I know a way is being made out of no way. And I can't wait to see how this works out. My vibration just went. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a shift to be able to realize that, I, that we each have that power of realization as long as we raise our vibration, affirm the truth. And we, have to, we can't be attached to outcome. We can't be attached to our timeline. We can't, like, scoot somebody along. All right, come on, baby. Your spiritual growth needs to pick up a little bit here. We, we can't do that. It's divine timing. Each person's path is perfect for them. And so the best prayer that we could ever pray for another person is the will of God be done because will is thought. And the only thought that God has for his children is perfect love and happiness. Perfect joy. And happiness. And so, if somebody wants to go, it's hard. I'm telling you, it's hard. It took me three years to deal with that on a, on a spiritual level. Until finally, in a Candace workshop, <laughs> writer's workshop, it was revealed to me that that was exactly what I asked for. So what a gift that was. If someone disconnects from you, does not, can't be with you, don't take it personal. It's not about you. What is about us is our consciousness and our work. And we have to forgive the past because it is never, ever. I heard Adele say this because they were asking her about her music. And she said, they said, well, what about your songs? And she said, well, it's all of life. It's just life. It's never as good as you thought it was or as bad. It's just life. So we have to be willing to release the past. And one of my favorite lessons in the course is the past is over. It can touch me not. It can't touch me unless I keep bring. Come on, past. Let me bring you into my future in the present moment. Then we recreate the past. Or if we're foreboding joy, oh, I can't be too happy. I can't be too happy because the other shoe won't drop. I, that's a hard one for me. That's all. I know the other shoe's going to drop. Let me, let me hold off a little bit of joy. Let me hold back a little bit just in case. What if we experimented with leaning into joy as we've talked about before? Whew. Paying attention to, to where our feelings are taking us. We're feeling vibrational universe. And if I feel a tug, that's my sign. S-Y-B-D. Sit your butt down as Rev said. 
bring myself back to the present moment. Because I show us, you know, what don't want to recreate that past. Mm, I was not a good person. So it, it, just pay attention, self-awareness. And I'm talking about forgiving the past. One of the things that I'm so grateful for, you know, coming from a divorced family is that near my father's life, I think it was about a year before he passed, and my mother had always told me, you don't want, don't talk to your daddy. And used to talk smack about him all the time. You don't want, I don't want you to spend time with him, be around him. But toward the latter part of my mother's life and his life, um, she said, you know, you really need to go see your daddy. I said, what? I need to what? Telling me all my, this last, for the last 15 years to stay away from him and, and now you want me to go see him? She said, yes, Deborah Ann. And so as, as, as the universe would have it, as spirit would have it, my father was getting married, I think, for a third or fourth time. I don't know. So, you know, it's a genetic, I think, and sometimes. But uh, I used to tell people I'm genetically predisposed to divorce until I decided I wasn't. But he, his wife wanted us all to be together for the wedding. And she insisted on all of the children coming to the wedding. And wow, what, what a gift that was. I'm grateful for my mother because she said, you need to see your daddy. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that this woman I barely knew insisted upon the children being at the wedding. And so I was able to heal this relationship with my father. And I, I was taking a class in Walterboro for recertification, so I got to spend a whole semester at staying at his house because I, it was too far to drive back and forth. And so we had meals together, grilled, grilled together, and had conversations. And one of the best gifts my father gave me was, was this statement. He said, I remember how you were. And I see how you are now. And I have no clue how you got here. I took a breath and I said, Daddy, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're here together now. Forgiveness is our function as miracle workers. I have no idea what my father went through in his life. And yes, I needed him to be more. But I was so grateful to go fishing with him. To work on projects with him just, just for six months to a year. And Christmas Eve that year, my father was at my brother's house with my mama, my stepdaddy, my, my daddy, and my stepmama, and everybody was all in the same house having a great time. And my father walked out on the porch to walk me out. And he watched. I saw him in the rearview mirror. He did not take his eyes off of me. My father loved me. He didn't know how to show it early on. And he did the best that he could. And, and I have a power and a presence within me that has never, ever left me or abandoned me. We each have this to lean into. That is our full-time job, our Consciousness is our responsibility. And I invite you to experiment. Because you don't want to be in the same space this time next year. So catch a vision of the person you want to step into. And show up as. Because we go into these places. We go into the upper room. And then we come out. And we do life. We do life. We do what's in front of us. We do what Candace did in the parking lot when she saw this person in anger as a child of the Most High God and greeted him with 
love and peace, the presence of the alternative. That's what we get to do. We experiment. Try it out. Try it out for a month. Don't want to do a month. Try a week. Money back guarantee. So because experiment leads to experience. And experience leads to realization. And that is enough to say, oh, yeah. Thank you for joining us for Weekly Wisdom from Jubilee Circle. If you enjoyed the program, we hope that you'll support us by leaving a good review of this podcast wherever you download your shows. We also hope you'll support us in other ways, either by becoming a subscriber to our YouTube channel and our weekly newsletter, or by supporting us financially. You can find out how to do all of that by visiting our website at jubileecircle.com. Many thanks to Audio Coffee from Pixabay for supplying our podcast music. Join us again next week, and until then, take the words of Meister Eckhart with you. If the only prayer you ever say is thank you, that will be enough. We thank you for your time and wish you the kind of week that will leave you saying, oh yeah.